this is the materials for energy module and the current lesson is on materials for fuel cells. So we will start by talking about what a fuel cell is. In the simplest case, a fuel cell converts a chemical fuel into electricity. So for example, if hydrogen is used as the fuel, then the fuel cell basically takes the chemical reaction of hydrogen plus oxygen, which forms water, and that chemical reaction normally produces a lot of heat. That is, it produces excess energy that's given off as heat when hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. In a fuel cell, what we want to do is to convert that heat to a more useful energy, specifically electricity. And so what is done in a fuel cell, the trick is that we basically set up the fuel cell so that we can separate the overall chemical reaction into two separate half reactions. And through this method, the chemical energy that's normally released as heat can be partially converted to electrical energy. So one half reaction takes place at the anode and involves the production of protons and electrons from hydrogen. So recalling that a hydrogen atom is just a proton plus an electron. The second chemical reaction takes place at the cathode and brings the protons and the electrons and an oxygen molecule back together to form water. Now there are numerous types of fuel cells. In this lecture, we will primarily, and in fact solely, be talking about a fuel cell that's known as a proton exchange membrane fuel cell, a PEM fuel cell. And a proton exchange membrane fuel cell is the type of fuel cell that's most widely being studied for use in transportation applications, uh, particularly for automobiles. So we are now going to look in a little more detail about what reactions take place in a fuel cell and what kinds of materials are important and used in a fuel cell. So as I mentioned, um, there are chemical reactions at both the anode and the cathode in the fuel cell. And in addition, you will notice in this diagram in the middle of the fuel cell, there's this very special material called a polymer membrane. And if we look at the anode reaction, as was mentioned in the last slide, the primary reaction is that hydrogen is split into protons and electrons. The basic idea here is that we want to separate those. And to do that, the protons are, or rather the, the membrane, the polymer membrane is designed so that it will transmit protons from one side of the fuel cell to the other side of the fuel cell, as shown here by the arrow. However, the electrons that are produced are unable to pass through that membrane, and they are diverted into an external circuit. Now, in that external circuit, if you recall, there is excess energy that's given off by this overall chemical reaction, that is the combination of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. And so what we can do is that since the electrons are being passed through this external circuit, we can actually produce work or electrical work in, in that external circuit and still have enough energy in the electron when it comes back around that it can still carry out the remainder of the reaction. So basically what we are doing is, is that we're diverting some of the energy that would normally be given off as heat and converting it into electrical work in this external circuit that's connected to the fuel cell. 
So then at the cathode, we bring all the pieces back together, the protons, the electrons, and oxygen, and the combination of those then completes the chemical reaction to form water. And so the overall output then is water, and whatever excess heat is left based on however much energy we extracted as electrical work. So there are two very important types of materials that are needed for fuel cell for fuel cells to work well. One type of material is this polymer membrane. The other type of material is or are catalysts that sit at the anode and the cathode. So the polymer membrane has to be a material that transmits protons but not electrons and thereby allows the electrons to travel through an external circuit producing the electricity. The catalyst, the catalysts are materials that are used to speed up the chemical reactions at the anode and the cathode and that allows the fuel cell to work more efficiently in the sense that it can do the chemical reactions much faster than if the catalysts weren't present. It turns out that much of the cost of producing electricity from fuel cells is actually due to the materials that are used to make the fuel cells. And in particular, the cost of the catalysts is a major component of the overall material costs. Fuel cells have a long history. The first fuel cells were developed in the mid-1800s, around 1840. Uh, the gentleman who's normally um, acknowledged for developing the first fuel cells was a scientist named William Grove. And here's showing a schematic of one of his early apparatuses that, as you can see, was basically called a gas battery. That is, you combine hydrogen and oxygen and produce electricity. There, ever since, the study of fuel cells has been an active area of research. However, as we will discuss, it remains the case that electricity from fuel cells is still more expensive than electricity that we can produce from other sources. Even so, fuel cells are very, very useful in some specialized cases. One of the more glamorous examples is, is in the area of space exploration. And so the space shuttle derived much of its power from fuel cells, and fuel cells were also used by NASA in the early manned space exploration flights such as the Apollo program in the 1960s. So in more important general applications, one could ask, why should I care about fuel cells now? Well, fuel cells, as we've noted, are a technology that can generate electricity from chemical fuel. And if hydrogen is used as the fuel, the only chemical byproduct is water. So it is an environmentally very clean source of electrical energy. Once we have produced electricity, then that electricity can be used for lighting or it can be used for mechanical work, such as in transportation. Furthermore, chemical fuel is a good way to store and transmit power. So using fuel cells, we can produce electricity when and where it's needed from the stored chemical fuel. So fuel cells are a very active area of current research. And here, I want to take a few moments to summarize the advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells in their present state. So starting with the advantages, one of the very big advantages of fuel cells is that, as noted, it's an extremely clean source of electrical energy. 
if one burns hydrogen in a fuel cell, then the only chemical byproduct is water. And you can basically produce electricity in a completely carbon neutral way. There will be no carbon dioxide emissions associated with the electrical production. Furthermore, it's possible in principle that the hydrogen could be produced using a solar process. So for example, one could take water and use light, sunlight, to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen, then turn around and combine the hydrogen and oxygen in a fuel cell to produce electricity. So with this type of process, basically you have a completely clean process to produce electrical power from sunlight. This would be a totally carbon-free energy cycle. In addition, producing electrical power directly is very useful. Electrical power is considered a very high quality source of power in contrast to, say, heat. Heat needs to be converted into other sources of power typically before it can be used, whereas electrical power can be used in directly in transportation, in consumer electronics, or in lighting, and it's a very high quality form of energy. Finally, as we've noted, one can tie the production of electrical power from fuel cells into a chemical fuel storage and delivery infrastructure similar to that that we currently use so that we should be able to adapt a lot of the investments that have already been made in terms of storage and transportation of chemical fuels and convert those to be used in uh, an economy that's driven off of fuel cell technology. On the other hand, the disadvantages still exist and the primary disadvantage is that fuel cells are still currently too expensive as a source of electricity to be fully economically competitive with other sources. Um, these other sources would include things such as burning coal in power plants, which can be used to produce electricity very, very cheaply. And currently, fuel cells are not able to produce electricity as cheaply as that. However, as we've already mentioned, much of the cost of fuel cells or of the electricity from fuel cells arises from the materials that are used. So basically trying to make fuel cells a more widely applicable technology comes down to a problem in material science. In terms of the materials used in fuel cells, we will specifically look at the catalysts that are used because these are one of the major sources of the expense of materials in fuel cells. So why use a catalyst? Well, as we mentioned, without a catalyst, the chemical reactions that take place at each electrode in a fuel cell are very slow. So the catalysts are needed to speed up the reactions to allow a useful amount of power to be generated. In general, a good catalyst for a chemical reaction simply increases the rate of the chemical reaction, but the catalyst itself is left unchanged. In fuel cells, historically, the best catalysts contain platinum metal. The platinum metal is then processed to enhance its performance as a catalyst. Typically, that processing involves structuring the metal down to the nanometer length scale, as shown in this image on the left side of the slide, where you can see that the catalyst has been structured down to a scale of literally a few nanometers. The scale bar on this slide is 200 nanometers, or 0.2 microns. So this structuring of catalysts to the nanometer length scale leads to a large surface area of the catalyst and enhances the overall catalytic performance. 
But now we turn to the question, given that platinum is used as a catalyst, why are fuel cell catalysts so expensive? And the simplest answer to that is to note that platinum is a very rare and expensive material, and in fact costs as much or more than gold. It is Platinum is one of the most rare elements on Earth. And one way of, of understanding that is to actually look at this diagram, which shows the relative abundance of each element in the Earth's crust. So you can see, first of all, we should note that this diagram is on a logarithmic scale on the y-axis. So each tick mark that I'm illustrating here actually corresponds to a factor of 10 change in the amount of the element that's available. So we can see that elements such as oxygen or silicon or calcium or iron are all very abundant in the Earth's crust. In contrast, elements such as gold or platinum are about a billion times less abundant than the elements such as oxygen or silicon. So this rarity of metals such as platinum makes them very, very expensive and in fact, it could even limit whether there's actually enough of the material available for widespread use in technologies. So in terms of the expense of fuel cells, one of the things that would be great would be to be able to produce fuel cell catalysts that worked just as well as platinum, but that were made of much more abundant and cheaper elements. However, at present, essentially all the fuel cell catalysts used are based on platinum. And so as a material, it's useful to think about some of the properties of platinum. So as we just noted, platinum is a very rare metal. It's the sixth least abundant natural element. It is usually unreactive itself, but in powdered form with a high surface area structured on the nanometer length scale, it is an excellent catalyst for many chemical reactions. In addition to fuel cells, such as we're talking about here, industrially it is used in automobile catalytic converters, that is the converters on exhaust systems of automobiles that help remove some of the unpleasant chemicals from the internal combustion process. It's also used widely as a catalyst in oil refining and in the overall chemical industry. Because of its rarity and because it is used in a number of important industrial processes, it is very, very expensive and its cost fluctuates substantially according to the market. And that cost fluctuation can actually make it difficult to develop economically competitive technologies based on platinum. As an aside, and from a materials perspective, apart from its catalytic uses, platinum and its alloys are also used in numerous consumer products such as jewelry, laboratory instruments and laboratory equipment, and also a number of medical applications. Uh, many of these applications rely upon the fact that platinum is, an, is, an un, is a typically unreactive element. So what are the current materials challenges for fuel cell catalysts then? The overarching challenge 
is to replace platinum-based catalysts, the expensive catalysts that are currently used, with less expensive materials that have equal performance or possibly even better performance, and which could greatly reduce the cost of electricity produced from fuel cells. This area of research is a very active area of material science research in the world today. There are certainly some promising new directions that have been developed. One that is highlighted here is a schematic process showing the preparation of a new type of non-precious metal, that is non-platinum containing fuel cell catalyst. This material is based on the metals iron and cobalt, as well as carbon and nitrogen from a polymer source, and has shown a good deal of promise in terms of fuel cell performance. Much, much more work remains to be done to optimize the performance of these less expensive catalytic materials, and it's a very active area of research to try to reduce the cost of electricity generated from fuel cells. So to summarize the points of this lesson, inexpensive electricity from fuel cells could completely transform the way we produce and use energy, and it could greatly reduce the environmental cost of energy. Fuel cells can produce clean electricity that can be used to power automobiles, consumer electronics, houses, factories, lighting, and so forth. However, currently, fuel cells and electricity from fuel cells are still too expensive to compete with electricity produced from other sources. If these barriers or these economic barriers could be overcome, then fuel cell technology could truly transform many aspects of our lives. The primary technology that needs improvement at this point is to find less expensive materials that can be used in fuel cells while still maintaining the good performance that can be obtained today. This challenge is one of the major areas of current research in material science.